Hello, uh, my name is Jonas Gren, and I will read a poem from my book called Anthropocene. Um, the poem is called Before the Dust Burns, and it's been translated by myself and Dougal Hein, who sits here, and also by Erika Sigvarsdotter, who sits there. It starts with leaks in the roof, trickling water like troublemakers, lands on limestone busts, aquarels, runs through bookshelves and hard drives, note collections and drafts. The microbial communities enter. Good day. Now we're here, all of us. Fine art will be invaded. But before then, before the prokaryotes and amoebas and the molds conquer stock exchanges and galleries, before earthworms eat their way through houses and offices and the seafronts erode, the refrigerated displays fill up with water and duckweed where the snakes swim as the grizzlies cry out for moths between the binders and the shrimps grow in Trump Tower, as the ticks bite the northern elk and the coral reefs shine like rows of teeth, while the river trout escape to the pike and the moss piglet enters eternal cryptobiosis, as the spiders rain on a desolate Krakatau and the krill fry seek protection among electric cars hiding from the whales. As the starlings impersonate in the light of glowworms and the cranes run on muddy country roads, the accentors follow the tree limit upwards. As the hair worms look for locusts among the sheep on Trafalgar Square. Before the elephants disappear. Before the frogs disappear. As the jackdaws flock among the mosquitoes and the horses in exhibition halls. And the crows talk to badgers in aircraft skeletons where the bumblebee lives. And the bats hang, waiting for the night. As the lemmings follow the ancient paths, and the crickets wake up in late summer's heat. The ants search in autumn wind, and the sand wasp crawls into bed. The eagle hunt for drones, and the extremophile awake in, from the depths of ice as the wisons feed on the sudden forests in the dove's call, and the wild boar strolls on echoing floors as the jellyfish acquire dominion of the seas. Before then, humans will live in hydrogen and light. The liberal arts will turn to dust, burnt by a dying sun. But before the dust burns, before it's dispersed in a vacuum of cold, struggle will spring from tissue strained against the glowing star, against death as life. And before we burn, just as it burns, plates will be steaming, potatoes and wine, and before we burn, just as it burns, noses will meet, hands and skin. And before we burn, just as it burns, stillness exists, a place within. And before we burn, just as it burns, the places will meet like feet in grapes. 
and before we burn, just as it burns, the feet will trample and speech will sound. And while it burns, just as it burns, the light will pass through stomata. And while it burns, just as it burns, sunlight will blend with water to air. And while it burns, just as it burns, guts will break down the stalks and the leaves. And while it burns, just as it burns, cells will become and creatures be born. And while it burns, just as it burns, cells will, di will divide in resistance for life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron Tucky and Jonas Gren, whom you will also see throughout these three days together in other parts of the program. My name is Malin Östman, and I'm from CEMUS, the Center for Environment and Development Studies, as part of Uppsala University and SLU. It's very nice to see you. Uh, warmly welcome here. It's exciting to finally have reached this date. It's uh, 10 years ago, 10 years since the first climate existence conference here. So that's quite a while. A lot has happened and a lot hasn't happened. So we have a lot to contemplate. This is the fourth climate existence conference together with uh, the Sigtuna Foundation. CMS and the Sigtuna Foundation have a long standing relationship where we cooperate on these overarching issues and trying to discuss the most important things as we find them. It's very nice to see you all and warmly welcome. And now, now I will give the word to Alf Lindemann, director of Sigtuna Foundation. Director of Sigtuna maybe soon. <laughs> I'm so happy to be able to welcome all of you here to the Sigtuna Foundation today. Uh, first of all, I'm happy that you are here, uh, and I'm so thankful for the work that Seamus and Marlin and Isaac has put in to make such an exciting program. I really look forward to what we have ahead of us these three days. I'm also very thankful that, and, and happy that the program includes so many different forms of expression and so many different voices. This corresponds very tightly to the identity of the Sigtuna Foundation. When this place was started, it was already, rec already from the start recognized that when we deal with the big questions, when we try to understand ourselves, when we un try to understand life, when we try to understand reality, uh, it will never be sufficient with one perspective. It will never be sufficient even with many sciences. Uh, we need the art. We need existential reflection to deal with the big issues. Finally, I'm extremely happy that this conference takes place and for the collaboration that we've had with CMS now for so many years because the theme of this, car of this conference really is at the core of the interest of the Sigtuna Foundation. We have had and still have research projects in this area. Uh, we had a, uh, the so-called complex project uh, in which Hans Liljenström played a very important role here and in Europe. It was an EU-funded project where we were one of 17 institutions being part of that. That dealt with uh, system changes needed to, to, for Europe to become a low-carbon society. Uh, we have now an exciting project headed by Astrid Dugilvje, who is also here, and she will speak later in the conference, uh, called Ice Change. And I will turn, uh, let her explain what that stands for. 
uh, I hope that you will be inspired during these days by the great weather and and sort of the 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 Sig Tuna Foundation, the identity and the architecture and the environment. Uh, I look forward to hear what all of you are going to, to say and contribute to the dialogue. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Elf. Can you hear me, everyone? Thank you, Elf. And thank you, Jonas and Aaron and Malin, for that great start to this conference. Um, my name is Isak Stoddard. Um, I also work at CMS together with Malin and my colleagues, many of whom are here. And um, I've been sort of um, I'm guilty of uh, thinking up the program, so I thought I'd sort of bring you into the, the program of these three, t three days that we have together. Um, and hopefully most of you have received uh, this beautifully designed program, who's, which has been designed by my colleague in the back, Daniel Mosberg, who's sitting at the table in the back, and also beautifully illustrated uh, by uh, one of the artists here. The cover is, is a piece by Adam Sabira, who's also here in the room. I don't right here as well. So thank you for offering your artwork to the cover of this, this program. And also, uh, if you explore the program, you'll see it will be interspersed by, uh, by poems uh, by Jonas Grian here, who, who you heard already today. A little bit shorter poems than the one you read just now. Um, and in the beginning of this, um, this program, you can see there's sort of an overview over the three days that we have together. Um, and while Marlon and I were working with the program, and we had a few meetings here at the Sigtuna Foundation, we were trying to figure out a way to think about the flow of the program that we will have here uh, at the Sigtuna Foundation. And we came up with um, some form of very, let's say, a, a mythic organizing principle uh, that was inspired by um, a few different strands. But partly it came through Dougald and his work with a storyteller from the UK called Martin Shaw who was speaking a lot about uh, the relationship between the human world and what we've come to call here the village and perhaps the more than human wor world, which is here represented by the forest. I won't say more than that at this moment in time. I let you bring your own sort of imagination to how we've sort of thought about the flow of this program. Um, but one other thing perhaps I could mention is that we've um, tried to design a program where, where we sort of go like this. So we will convene in a, in a bigger group here in the Stura Salen, which we are right now, but then quite often we will, will sort of head off into smaller groups and smaller constellations and have quite a few, hopefully, conversations in, uh, that will be in, in, in smaller rooms uh, that you will find out where they are eventually after spending a few days here at the Sigtuna Foundation. One starts to figure out where, where rooms are. It takes a while, um, but you'll have help and there will be other peoples that you, that you can follow as well. Uh, and these parallel sessions and also the talks in the plenary are described in more detail um, further back in the program. So you can read up on the, on the parallel sessions, but also the talks that we will be listening to in this room, uh, in this program. Um, but perhaps another thing to mention is, um, and we always try to do this, Molly, and we almost always fail, is to uh, make really long lunches and really long breaks. Uh, because I think as we write in the, the sort of description of, of climate existence, so that's sort of the welcome note here, we... We are um, here, one of the reasons we're here is to explore the cracks where there is potential for alternative patterns to emerge in our societies and so forth. And that's probably maybe also the, the role of the coffee break sometimes. I think the, the role of the break is sometimes, you know, the, the most important part of, of a conference. And so we've th tried to think about that as well, but we sort of like to bring that to your attention as well, is, is, is that this place is quite unique and you'll learn more about the Sigtuna Foundation throughout your days here, but it is a place that is designed for good conversations and, and good dialogue. Um, so hopefully you'll have a lot of chances to explore that uh, over the next few days. As um, Alf mentioned, and, and we also write here in the program, we are really trying to, and this has become more apparent actually over the 10 years that we work with the Climate Existence Conference, that we really need to explore the, the, the problems and the questions and the predicament of climate change using different languages and different entry points. Um, this morning we had a conversation over breakfast, a few of us, and, and we're sort of using the metaphor of a house 
and that we need uh, uh, different, there's different windows. If you say the, the house is sort of reality or, or, or the world, we have different windows of looking into this house and we tend to spend a lot of time maybe looking through just one window or just acknowledging that there perhaps is just one window. So maybe something we will uh, do during these days together is uh, sort of recognize that there are many windows into, into this house of reality and that uh, some might need to be cleaned, some uh, might need to be opened and the, draw, uh, the blinds have to be opened up and we have to look into them as well. And that's hopefully something we will, we will explore together uh, over these next days. So we've invited contributions from the artistic side of, of, of working with these questions just as much as the intellectual side of working with these issue, issues. Um, and you'll hear more about a house, I think, soon as well. We'll see. I think Vanessa might have something to say about that. A few practicalities before I hand over. Um, we have a few cameras around the room, as you can see. Um, we have Ingrid over here, uh, who will be producing a, a short movie from, from, uh, from our time together here, more capturing the, the spirit of, of the conference more than the, the content, perhaps. Um, we have other people like Jan who are going around um, making small interviews and so forth. And others, we encourage everybody to document in the way that you feel is appropriate. But also being uh, uh, realizing that some of these issues are quite difficult to speak about and there's difficult questions that emerge perhaps. So be uh, respectful. And I guess that connects to uh, Ingrid if, if you wanted me to mention also if there's anybody who doesn't want to be on film, uh, please... Uh, speak to the people filming, and specifically Ingrid, because she's sort of organizing this, uh, and just let her know if you wouldn't like to be on film, and we'll make sure that you won't, won't be on film on the internet. Um, speaking of the internet, um, we have modernized the Climate Existence Conference, uh, so nowadays we have hashtags and stuff like that. Um, so this is the ha hashtag we came up with at a CMUS staff meeting. Uh, we had some... Um, yeah, long conversation, but I won't go into that. Uh, but uh, this is the hashtag, yeah, Climax uh, 2018. So if you're into tweeting and such things, uh, that's what we're using. Um, and then going from the digital sort of reality to the, the, the physical reality, I guess another thing to acknowledge is that tr it's, it's, it's just an opportunity to be present, of course, as well both maybe digitally, but more even more importantly so physically in this space as well. So, uh, and on connection to that as well, we have, there's an addition to the program. Uh, I guess this, um, this afternoon we will have the chance for those of you interested in learning more about the Sigjana Foundation, um, Sofia here will um, make a little tour around here and tell you a little bit more about the history and, and the, the sort of this place, which is quite a fantastic place. So do you, know, do you have a time? Have we discussed a time? Okay, good. Half past five outside the chapel. We're also an open mic. We'll begin at the same time with Marie Koshin and a meditation. So there's three parallel things in the non part of the program. So that's, yeah, it's kind of confusing, but hope you'll figure it out. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, my friend and colleague, um, Dougald Hein, uh, who will uh, provide a short introduction that will end to Vanessa's talk, which is our first keynote, keynote talk. Um, Dougald is. Um, you could, I think you could call you a, a friend, a dear friend of CMS, perhaps also a friend of the Climate Existing Conferences. You were here two years ago as well. Um, you are a writer, and a, if I remember correctly on your website, you say something about uh, that you are a writer that has the bad habit of getting easily distracted and starting organizations instead of writing. But I think you are making more time in your life to write. Um, Dougal's moved from the uh, UK to Sweden quite recently and is now making himself a home in the town of Westeros, not too far away from here. And he's also starting a school called Home, which you can learn more about if you talk to Dougal. So, Dougal, uh, the floor is yours to introduce Vanessa, our first keynote speaker at Climate Existence 2018.